Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video. Now, you're probably noticing something different here. And as you can tell, I actually did something cool to my Nintendo Switch. Yes, that is right. I actually swapped the shells on my Joy-Cons and on the Switch itself also, on the back. So, as you can see here, it's translucent, which is pretty cool. And yeah, so in today's video, I want to basically show uh, show off my new switch and basically talk about what kind of stuff I well, what was the procedure like to be able to swap the shells on both the Joy Cons and the switch backplate. So yeah, let's get into it. Now, first of all, let me just start off by saying, yeah, I've had the switch for now like three years or so. And I've had the well, red and blue Joy-Con, uh, Joy-Cons, uh, and well, and the regular black Switch. So yeah, and it was only like a week ago or something that I decided that I want to swap uh, the shells and uh, make something different. Yeah, with my Switch and make it look a little bit more new. So I decided to go ahead and order some shells. Uh, yeah, off eBay. And yeah, the shells were actually quite cheap, I gotta say. Uh, they were around maybe 20 bucks or something. I will la leave a link in the description so you can have a look for yourself if you're curious about swapping the shells on your Joy-Cons and Switch. But yeah, it is really cool and I really recommend, recommend doing this stuff if you're bored of your current Switch and just want to have a new look on it. And yeah. But I wanted to detail the whole process of how you can swap the shells and what, what was it like, is it hard or difficult, uh, is it hard or easy, and yeah, so we're gonna go over all of that stuff in today's video. Now before I will, before you actually do any kind of repairing or swapping of the shells on the Switch, you need to make sure to have the proper tools. And I'm, this is really important because, let me tell you all, when I first wanted to do this stuff, I actually did not have, have the proper tools. And you know what happens if you don't have the proper tools? That's right, you will mess up, you will mess things up. And what really happened to me is that I actually managed to strip the screws on the back plate of the switch here. And yeah, basically there are four screws here that are holding the back plate together and I managed to strip one of them but yeah luckily I managed to unscrew them but it, it is really a pain if you don't have the right tools you will just make things a lot more difficult for you to repair and to, to be able to unscrew so yeah there's one thing to make sure you need to have the right tools if you want to swap the shells or perform something like this on your switch maybe you want to clean the uh, internals, maybe you want to swap, uh, change the thermal paste, you need to make sure to have the right tools. And uh, which leads me to actually recommending, uh, this is what I used to be able to swap the shells, and I actually bought this iFixit kit right here, a screwdriver kit, which is uh, iFixit precision bit set, and it has a lot of uh, different bits for screws, but most importantly it has a tri-point bit that fits perfectly with the switch screw, uh, with the switch, because the Nintendo Switch uses some tri-point uh, screws which are kind of a little bit of a pain to unscrew and you need some kind of special screwdrivers, which is why I recommend buying this iFix uh, toolkit set. You don't really have to buy this whole toolkit, but I would recommend doing it anyway because uh, for well future stuff maybe you will need it. maybe it will come in handy for later when you're gonna do some repairs on your other gadgets. And it doesn't have to be really the switch itself. So yeah, so you, basically you need to make sure to have uh, some tri points screwdrivers and yeah this one definitely comes with them and it's a really cool toolkit which I recommend to buy if you want to do something like this and yeah uh, where I got the shells from is from eBay but 
Specifically, I got them from a company or something like that called Extreme Rate. I'm pretty sure you've heard about them. They're they're probably they're like the biggest uh, shell manufacturer of consoles. They do different kind of shells for different consoles, not just the Switch itself. So yeah, I bought them from Extreme Rate on eBay. That they have a they have some listings on eBay. I will link. It in the description if you're curious curious but yeah so there you go basically if you're curious where you can buy the shells you, I will I definitely recommend buying them from extreme rate they make some quality shells and yeah you, you can't go wrong with them now when I first started uh, disassembling their shells and everything uh, the back plate it was actually pretty easy and pretty straightforward to take off now, um, yeah, you should basically you have like four screws right here, and then you also have the side uh, Joy-Con rail screws. You have only one in the middle here, and also on the other side, there's like a screw in the middle. You have to unscrew to be able to uh, take off the back plate. Now, <laughs> here's the funniest thing. I actually managed to strip one of the screws right here on the Joy-Con rails and it required some uh, very heavy pre well, procedures that I had to do. I basically had to um, ham hammer my screwdriver down a bit so that it can grab onto something to be able to unscrew the strip uh, screw that uh, yeah, went horribly wrong. Which, uh, like I previously said, you need to make sure to have the right tools. But if you have the right tools, then this, uh, this won't be a problem for you. Swapping the back plate is probably one of the easiest things you can do with the Switch. Now, when it comes to the Joy-Cons themselves, this is where things get a lot tricky. When I first opened up the Joy-Cons, uh, let me tell you, there are a lot of small details and stuff that you basically need to be careful with because there are a lot of springs and small details that uh, you can lose, so you may better make sure to keep track of them because otherwise you're just gonna make the whole process more uh, confusing for you and it's gonna be of a nightmare to uh, find everything and uh, yeah, assemble it back. But yeah, so this is how it looks. Uh, one thing that I want to show also that since I had the red and blue Joy Cons, you can tell that the shells did not come with the side buttons here, so as you can tell. As you can tell right here, you, I still have the like blue buttons from the blue Joy-Con and then I also have the red uh, shoulder buttons on the red Joy-Con. So yeah, unfortunately, like I said, the shells did not come with the uh, side buttons here, but there are some shells that do come with these, so yeah, but this one, these ones unfortunately do not come with any of the uh, side buttons here, but yeah. Swapping the shells on the Joy-Con themselves, it was quite a pain actually, I gotta say. There are small ribbon cables that you have to be careful with and not damage. And at the same time there are a lot of springs too. And I managed to actually lose one of the springs. And yeah, but luckily the kit came with extra springs. So yeah, it wasn't really a problem, I managed to put it all together. but. Yeah, the Joy Cons. You need to be extra careful, careful with them if you when you're swapping the shells on the Joy Cons because there are a lot of small details and screws that you need to um, keep track of. And also, when you are putting back the shells and screwing them back together, you gotta make sure not to uh, screw too tight in because otherwise the buttons will be unclickable. Now, here's one thing that. Uh, I think uh, it was on this Joy-Con, the buttons are a, a little bit more um, well, harder to press on compared to this one for example. This one is much easier to press on, but this one is a bit, uh, I have to push down a, a little bit more. It's not really that hard, but still I can feel uh, there's like some kind of tension in it that you, uh, because I apparently screwed in too tight and yeah. I obviously can't fix this problem, but I need to basically unscrew everything 
back. Uh, I basically need to unscrew everything and then uh, screw it back again. So I really don't want to do it, and honestly, it doesn't really bother me that much. But yeah, basically, when you're swapping the shelves, just make sure not to uh, screw in too tight because otherwise, you're just gonna make the puzzles un unclickable. And at the same time, you probably will screw. Uh, you will probably strip the screws themselves. So yeah, you gotta make sure to be careful with that. And yeah, but this is how the back looks actually. So as you can see right here, you can see the back, uh, back plate, like the heat shield of the switch. You can also see the fan here. And on the joy console, you can also see that you can see the battery on the back, uh, behind. So yeah, right here, which is pretty cool. You can basically yeah, see the fan here, and then we also get the kickstand. And you can see the micro SD slot right here, which uh, is shown uh, behind the trans transparent back plate, which is pretty cool. And yeah, but I guess that's pretty much it for this video. I guess I just want to show off my new switch. Basically, it was a quick video just showcasing my new switch and my new Joy Cons. This is what I will be using from now on and like I said if you want to attempt to do this kind of repair yourself I will link some videos down in the description that I used that I personally found helpful myself and I will also link the iFixit toolkit that I recommend getting in case you want to perform something like this on your own switch so yeah that is cool but Overall, um, my overall opinion about this is that when you first start start with this, it obviously seems a little bit too scary, and uh, yeah, you, you think you can mess something up. But it's not actually that hard. It's it gets easier once you take the first step, and I I think I'm f I feel more comfortable now of uh, doing these kind of repairs. So yeah, I might in the future buy maybe extra joy cons and then swap the shells again because I actually found the procedure to be quite a lot of fun. I really like the customizing of it. So yeah, but it was quite a process I gotta say. But in the end the results were worth it and I'm really happy with the shells and everything. But yeah guys let me know your thoughts your thoughts about my new switch and how it looks. And yeah if you have any questions about how you can do this kind of stuff yourself feel free to leave them down in the comments and I will help you out with that stuff and basically uh, link you all these tools and stuff that you will be needing. So yeah, that is pretty much it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed watching this <laughs> quick short video about my new Switch and I will see you all later.